Hello. So I've gotten a few questions on whether it's possible to do measurements with the impedance analyzer uh, using a bias voltage or a DC offset. So um, by default, the measurement signal uh, across our device on the test uh, is something like this. So we have a sine wave here of varying frequency and this will be swinging around uh, zero volts here and the maximum so the actual volts is going to vary depending on the impedance but the maximum is 200 millivolt peak to peak so it will be plus 100 millivolt down to a minus 100 millivolt peak so what if we want to add a DC offset or a bias voltage. So what we want to do here is have it swing around um, another voltage. For example, we could say that should be 10 volts. So we have a 10 volt DC bias. So yes, we can do that. But since we're somewhat limited on the voltages available from the analog discovery, uh, we would not be able to change it more than maybe a few hundred millivolts uh, offset here, but we can use it uh, external power supply and we can add a DC voltage that way. So I had a quick look at the simplest way of doing it, or at least the simplest way I could uh, come up with. So we have our Kelvin connections here. So we will have a force and a sense wire for both positive and negative here. So if we See if I have this uh, somewhat in focus on the camera, yes. So if we say we have, uh, we don't care about a Kelvin connection, so we're just gonna make a very tiny small setup. So Kelvin, we don't need Kelvin. So if we just connect the force and sense together here, so we say this is force positive, sense positive, and force negative and sense negative here. So if we add a capacitor, um, I think my test was something around 10 microfarad. So this is gonna be a DC blocking capacitor. So of course it has to be rated for a voltage that's greater than whatever DC voltage we want to uh, add or offset uh, our measurement with. So do it like this and then we insert our device on the test here. So this is going to be our uh, DUT device on the test and then we need to connect our external um, bias voltage. So it's it's quite important here that whatever we use to supply the external uh, bias voltage is uh, isolated. It cannot share ground with uh, our impedance analyzer. And it's also important that uh, it should be a linear power supply. You don't want uh, switching noise to interfere with your measurement here. Uh, so I would recommend adding a current limiting resistor here. So depending on how much current you, you need, but let's say we're going to measure a capacitor, I would say somewhere between five to 10 kilo ohm here should be a reasonably good number. So it serves two purposes. It's going to do current limiting and at the same time it's going to isolate our uh, power supply as well. So our power supply is going to come over here and let's just say this is plus and this is minus we have here. Of course it, it can be turned around. You can use a negative bias voltage if you want to. It doesn't make any difference. So there might be some concern with well, are we not going to 
perhaps overload the outputs or the inputs here at some point if, if something goes wrong. But uh, if we have a look at the backside here, so we have a number of diodes here and these protect the inputs and the outputs um, at least up to very short pulse up to maybe 10 amps. Um, so that should be absolutely fine in this example here. So the size of this capacitor is really depends on how low do you want to go in frequency. So using a 10 microfarad here, I've used that to test capacitor and it seems to work quite well. Um, but it might depend if you need go really low in frequency, you might want to use a larger capacitor, but it's something to just experiment with. And if you need more current uh, through your DUT uh, doing uh, the measurement, well, you're going to have to experiment with this uh, current limiting resistor here. Okay, let me just try hold this up and then we can try to do a couple of measurements and see how it works. Okay, so I got everything hooked up here. So uh, what we have over here is our DC blocking capacitor. So this is just somewhat randomly chosen. So this is a 15 microfarad uh, bipolar uh, electrolytic capacitor rated for 100 volts. So it's just because I had one. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, electrolytic bipolar. Uh, use a film capacitor, but it should it should not be a polar uh, capacitor, that's for sure. Um, anyway, 15 microfarad, so slightly higher than I said here, but that should be fine. So what we're going to try and measure here is, don't know if you can see it, but we have a small capacitor here. So that is a 1206 package, 10 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitor. It's rated for 10 volts. So 10 microfarad, 10 volts. So what we want to test here is what is the capacitance of this capacitor at zero volts. And if we add BIOS voltages, let's say 3.3 volts, that would be a common use case where we would use it for decoupling a power supply line, for example. And what about five volts? How much capacitance do we have at five volts? Um, because this is one of the scenarios where this measurement is actually quite useful to have a bias voltage because these ceramic capacitors, they tend to change capacitance depending on the bias voltage. Okay, so it's all hooked up here. So these two go over to my power supply, plus minus, and then we have our little resistor here. So it's a 10 kilo ohm just for current limiting and isolating the bio, uh, power supply. And then I hooked up a multimeter here so just so we can see the actual voltage across our little capacitor here. One thing worth mentioning is uh, doing calibration for this setup. Um, so I've just done open short calibration. Basically open is uh, this will not be connected to anything. This will not be connected to anything. But in a closed calibration, uh, we will include this capacitor. So that means it's going to be calibrated out when we do the final uh, measurements of this little capacitor here. So we're just kind of eliminating that capacitor in the whole uh, measurement uh, through calibration. Okay, let's try to do a couple of measurements and see what happens. So the first measurement we're going to do is just with uh, zero bias voltage. So we're just going to have zero volt uh, across the capacitor here and we'll do a measurement and see what that looks like. So here we go. So looking at the measurement and if we use one kilohertz for our reference, uh, we can see the capacitance is just above nine microfarad here with no bias voltage. And for the second measurement, let's try uh, change the power supply to 3.3 volts 
and see what that measurements look like. So let me just change that. Okay, here we go. It's charging up, so yeah, close enough. 3.3 volts. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. With 3.3 volt bias, we can see the uh, capacitance is fallen down to 7 microfarad at 1 kilohertz. And finally, let's do a measurement where we change the power supply to 5 volts. Okay, here we go. With 5 volts, we are all the way down to 5.7 microfarad at 1 kilohertz. And the very last one, let's, let's test it to the limit and let's go all the way up to 10 volts. Here we go. It's just charging up here. And let's do that measurement. And 10, 10 volts. There's not much capacitance left. Uh, we are all the way down 3.1 microfarad. So that's quite a change over a uh, fairly small voltage range, something worth testing and knowing when using uh, ceramic uh, capacitors because depending on voltage you might not have the capacitance uh, you thought you did. Anyway, um, this was just a quick look at adding an external bias voltage. So I mean there's really no limitation here. You can use 100 volt if you want, uh, if you have a power supply that can uh, deliver 100 volt DC. The, you know, the only requirement is that it has to be fairly clean voltage, uh, otherwise it's going to mess up the measurement. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you're having a nice day. Bye bye.